Good morning to all of you, dear friends. Today we will talk on the key principle of education for sustainable development. For development of critical <coughs> thinking and sustainable competencies, the principles are based on the theory of critical pedagogy, transformation learning, lifelong learning leading to inclusive inquiry. Dear friends, when we talk about critical pedagogy, we have to focus on different approaches associated with promotion of transformatory learning and lifelong learning. They are identified with the principles of critical pedagogy. In this presentation, we'll discuss about six major concepts, namely critical pedagogy, transformatory learning, lifelong learning, workplace learning and continuing education, education for gender, equity and empowerment and inclusive learning. Let us throw light on what is critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy is a movement in the area of learning and especially the adult learning which leads to emancipation and empowerment of human being. Critical level thinking linked with critical approach of reflecting on our experiences and learning through our own life experiences was highlighted by Frankfurt School, who spread the message of autonomy of oppressed classes. In last unit, we had already discussed about autonomous learning, autonomous teaching, how autonomous teaching is linked with autonomous learning. So today we are talking about the theoretical background, which goes back to Paulo Freire, who talked about education of the oppressed and he equated learner status in a teacher-dominated classroom and in a formal teacher-dominated classroom, learner is a passive participant. He submits himself to the dictation of the teacher. So, the learner is considered as an oppressed fellow who doesn't have autonomy and to create the knowledge through his or her own participation. So, Paulo Freire equated learners in a teacher-dominated formal classroom as the oppressed classes and they are equated with oppressed classes of society who do not have enough scope to create their own knowledge, rather they follow the structured knowledge and reproduce the knowledge as developed by the experts. So in the absence of learner's autonomy, education doesn't take place. Education is equated with liberation. So, liberation of a learner, liberation of oppressed one from ignorance. So, from untruth, we have to move towards truth. So, we have to talk about liberation, emancipation from the blind faith and dependency on others. 
So, critical pedagogy talks about the learners must be free to decide their own goals of education, the purpose of education, objectives of education, and the way they will learn and they will proceed with knowledge creation process. So in this approach, critical pedagogy is based on the theory of emancipation. Teacher dominance in classroom in a structured framework doesn't bring about emancipation of learners. Teacher disciplines students and students follow the rules and conduct. So, <clears throat> in this context, the power relationship is in the hand of a teacher and students do not have full freedom. So, implications of critical pedagogy in teaching and learning. Critical pedagogy highlights active participation of learners. In a structured teacher-dominated classroom, the students are passive receivers of knowledge. So, learners must participate. They must inquire. They must solve the problem and they will have to gain knowledge through their own experiences. So critical pedagogy enables learners to find and develop their own opinion and position in society. So it talks about learner-centered education focusing on dialogue between learners. So the dialogue between learners must be encouraged in informal, non-formal, and formal setting of education. Different kinds of activities are to be promoted in dialogic method. You might have heard about the Socrates dialogue method where the teacher and taught they interact with each other. That is known as Socratic paradigm of learning. So in dialogic method, we connect our real life experience with learning. It engages students without textbook, without any burden in the context of Indian education, Yerspal Committee report had talked about the burden of school bags. So, in place of burden on school bags, the dialogue insists on the Gandhian principle of learning, that is hands-on experience activities. And it must be linked with the problem-solving strategies. The problems are linked with daily life situations and experiences in our own cultural and social setup. So, in this context, we learn to transfer our life in place of memorizing and reproducing the ideas in the name of tradition or maintaining traditional knowledge system as highlighted in communication theory of education. So when we talk about transformation, we are talking about transformatory learning. So critical pedagogy is leading to transformative learning or transformation-oriented education. Transformation education is a process by which previously uncritically assimilated assumptions, expectations, and habits of mind are questioned by a seeker of knowledge. 
So learner puts questions about the faiths, about the existing knowledge system, and it should not assimilate uncritically to our thinking process. So such assumptions and expectations are questioned by the learners and they are revised to make new opinion and to construct new knowledge. So in this regard, the transformation learning aims at empowering learners, providing ample scope for autonomous learning to foster critical reflection and self-knowledge, atma gyan. So self-knowledge is to be constructed by active participation of learners individually as well as in group. So it is linked with the concept of supporting learners by the mentor so that they can identify their own abilities and they become empowered to make use of their abilities in decision making of own learning. So transformative learning is directly linked with the lifelong learning, empowering learning to solve their problems in real life situations by fostering critical reflection and self-knowledge and supporting learning by teachers in classroom situation, school situation, as well as outside school situation. The learners are empowered by exercising their own abilities and cognitive potentials with own responsibility. We must encourage the discourse among learners and learners are empowered to make their own decision without depending on the others. So in this regard, the aims of education is to foster critical self-reflection and self-knowledge. In this context, proper learning environment must be provided so that learner makes their own voluntary efforts to seek knowledge and to construct knowledge. In this process, the learners are free to ask their own questions. They write their journals. They maintain their own portfolios. They write their real life experiences. And they express their creative thoughts, images in the form of art-based creative activities. In this context, the transformatory learning should be supportive in nature where a teacher is to play the role of a facilitator, where the learners enjoy their own autonomy, they must possess the abilities to take decision of self-directed learning and they decide on which area they will work on and it will be done through interaction and dialogues with their fellow colleagues and peers. So the teacher must encourage the environment where learners will interact freely and they proceed through group-based learning activities. Now we'll talk about adult learning and transformative learning. Paul of Friday talked about adult learning and lifelong learning. It is 
a continuous journey throughout life to transform our life experiences in school system we proceed from pre primary primary elementary to secondary and then higher education but lifelong learning is a continuous process of learning to experience and to create knowledge for transforming our life in this context we experience dilemma and we experience various value conflicts we undergo self examination and we involve ourselves through critical assessment of our own experiences and involvement in different kinds of experiences we relate our own discontents with that of others and we explore different alternatives and we make choice with new way of action so we proceed with such kind of experiential learning which makes us competent to play major role in transformation of our life we plan our course of action try out new action we assess and we identify the progress made in such action and we try to learn from such action by reintegrating it in the society with new perspectives of life so we have to focus on the concept of lifelong learning on the basis of the principle of transformative learning and critical pedagogy the prime area of sustainable development as you know are social economic cultural and environmental perspectives so in this context the liberal economy people invest on new skills in order to meet the labor market value so meeting the needs of women deprived sections of society and encouraging their participation in development process is the major focus of lifelong learning we develop the ability of learners belonging to multiple plural background of socio cultural system and we develop the abilities of learners to innovate continuously with appropriate skills in the global society so lifelong learning is directly linked with the local culture and global culture let us see what is adult literacy and lifelong learning adult literacy and lifelong learning hint at functional literacy that means the new competencies the new roles in changing social order are to be developed so we also focus on critical literacy the critical literacy talks about transforming our previous experience and building new experiences liberal literacy it talks about the autonomy and taking decision about our own life situations adult and continuing education at university education stage have their major implications the students who enter to higher education may not get the full competencies and exposure to the experiences which will continue to help them throughout life so after passing the graduation after few years of job experience we must get opportunity to re enter and re relearning in higher education stage adults who are graduates who re enter to update their professional knowledge like 
the medical professions, legal professions, teaching professions, management professions, pharmaceuticals, all these professions, the ICT people, they all come again to learn and relearn. The higher education must provide the opportunity for development and transformation of professional skills. And they can be short-term courses through open and online programs as well as through distance learning modes. The adults with or without previous experience in higher education may also join higher education through open university systems for improving their own capabilities and empowering themselves to face the real situations in life. Adult and lifelong learning is linked with the concept of workplace learning and continuing education. For example, we in the field of teacher education must continue with our journey for continuous development of professional values, professional skills. Hence, we must learn being engaged in schools as teachers, being engaged in universities as teacher educators. So the purpose of workplace learning is to prepare for work and working life as an alternative avenue of education for those who do not have access to education in formal education. There are many teachers who are still continuing in education sector and they get opportunities through workplace learning to be professionally trained in new areas of education. It promotes maintaining skills throughout working life and it maintains employment viability for economic and professional means. We maintain our skills throughout life and we are engaged in workplace learning. For example, as teachers, we keep on learning and professional development activities through workplace learning. So we learn from work experience, we learn by conducting projects, we develop critical reflections through work experience, the guided learning is encouraged and we expand learning opportunities with the provision of workplace-based curriculum for teachers already on the job. Now we are talking about gender equity, curriculum and empowerment of women. As you know, the eight millennium development goals, which we call as MDGs, it insisted on promoting the gender equity and empowerment of women. It is a global phenomenon. We must improve the ratio of girls to boys in different stages of education. It is not only the access to education, rather the access to quality education for girls' children. So, the extent, the ratio of illiterate females to males, particularly in the developing countries. As we see, our curriculum is heavily biased towards masculine characteristics and objectivity. So, danger sensitivity must be encouraged and reflected in our curriculum. So the rationality, objectivity, reasoning, like science education, mathematics education, professional education, they are treated as the best quality education. They have their own identity in the context of masculine characteristics. But in the context of feminism stand, we will have to see the emotive aspects, the knowledge with orientation to experience the real life situations where the girl child works in different socio-cultural contexts for 
constructing their knowledge and to give proper value to women's experience in constructing new way of life. So education of girl child and subject curriculum that says that instead of giving emphasis on science and technology based education, we should also give emphasis on generating awareness for the gender and engaging learners' experiences with transformation of life among women, empowering them and providing equitable opportunities for their development. This component of inclusive inquiry is very much prominent in our new education policy 2020 document and this has been also highlighted in International Commission report on futures of education of UNESCO 2020. The features of dialogic teaching is very much associated with inclusive inquiry. In inclusive inquiry, every child is given opportunity to raise questions and to provoke thoughtful answers. So the students must formulate questions. They must identify their own problems and they must search for the answers. And answers to provoke thoughtful questions that builds the blocks for further dialogues. So we will have to encourage the students' free inquiry and student-teacher interaction, student-student dialogues on a cumulative path for inquiry, where the teacher gives opportunity to students to question, state own point of views, and comment on ideas and issues arising in group interaction situation. So reflecting on own experiences while taking into consideration other experiences is the basis of inclusive inquiry. The teacher must engage in discussion with students with a view to explore and support their understanding of the contextual reality and the contents related concepts. Next point here is that the students' contributions are taken into consideration by teachers to decide that what is good for them and students are free to make their own decisions in solving their problems. There are different characteristics of inclusive inquiry as reflected in dialogic teaching. Dialogic teaching is promoting collectivity. The learners take collective decisions and they have collective responsibility. It is encouraging the reciprocal approach of interactions. It is the groups are interdependent on each other, making full efforts in holistic form to solve problems and to learn from our own experiences. It is supportive in nature. The learners support each other and teachers facilitate learning in supportive environment. It is purposeful and cumulative in nature. When I say purposeful and cumulative nature of dialogic teaching, from one step of experience we lead to another step of experience in hierarchical order of criticality. So, we are not giving much emphasis on the difficulty level of content, rather we are giving opportunities for development of our thinking from cognitive level to metacognitive level by engaging ourselves 
in different kinds of learning environments. So what is the teacher's concern in this regard? So we must be aware of the ways in which our learners talk and work together. It is not easy to promote an environment where collaborative and cooperative learning will take place. So a teacher must be very sensitive and plan and replan the activities and the surroundings and building appropriate environment. So we must make appropriate arrangements for learners. So that they will be good listeners and they should have proper communication abilities. We must encourage learners to participate freely, voluntarily with self-motivation and they should come out with their ideas and teacher must encourage students to make own contribution and teacher should appreciate by monitoring each learner's participation, each group's participation and giving them grades and the words of appreciation. So teachers should support students to reach consensus as Gandhian approach of arriving at consensus. Collectivism at the place of competitiveness is preferred in group learning situation where we arrive at consensus. So, there are different prerequisites for dialogue approach of teaching learning. What is the first one? The teachers and students should love each other. Loving each other is a value and it is a socio-emotional level of operation of our personality. Teachers should not perceive our students above them. The teacher is a co-learner. Teachers and learners should be equal partners through dialogue for construction of knowledge. Teacher learns from students' learning and students learn with support of teachers. So, in this regard, we must have mutual faith. So, love, faith, appreciation, recognizing the existence of learners with their own identity, that helps us to contribute to independent thinking, free thinking, and creative thinking, which leads to solve problems of criticality. So, dear friends, I talked about different areas of critical pedagogy, transformation learning, and lifelong learning for inclusion and equity, and further we'll have to discuss in other modules about the competencies required for achieving the goals of sustainable development in quality education. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.